Hi, this is Anthony from Evotech Pacific, and in today's video, we're going to talk about engraving with the Magic Art 7 software. This software has been designed specifically for the Red Technologies brand of laser engravers. Uh, in particular, today's uh, video, we're going to be using the L3. 30 watt laser engraver but this software is also useful for the 20 30 60 and 100 watt l3 versions and also the 20 watt l2 version so basically what we're doing here can be done on all of those machines above and uh, we're going to talk about how to position an image and some text on this stainless steel pendant here. So what I've done is I've removed the, uh, the jump ring from the pendant itself and placed the pendant in the clasp. And uh, if we take a look at the Magic Art 7 software, uh, we can see here that uh, the stainless steel pendant is sitting in our uh, metal clamp here. What we're going to do first is let's take a look at how to bring in an image. So I'm just going to click on the little picture uh, icon here, select my file, and then I'm going to just draw how large I want that particular file to be. So uh, I'm going to just position that just so that it's kind of down the bottom here. And uh, I'm doing this using the onboard camera that's included with the L3 laser engraver. And uh, I'm just going to scale that up just by dragging this up a little. Somewhere, say somewhere like that there. All right. So I've got, uh, you know, the bottom of the pendant here, the top, and at the top section here, I'm just going to type in mum. So to do that, I'm just going to click anywhere in the screen and click on our font or our text input. Uh, we're going to select a place where we want to uh, engrave. So I'm just going to type in mum. And the font that we're using here is the uh, Sigo script. Uh, you've got a whole different uh, bunch of options as far as your fonts are concerned. Basically anything that happens to be on your computer will also uh, populate in this list here. Just be aware that there are some fonts that um, you know do require uh, payment up front uh, when you purchase the fonts in order to be able to use them in a commercial sense and others are uh, free to use when it comes to uh, personal use of them. so always be aware of that uh, all right so I'm going to uh, position where I want uh, the word mum or the name mum to be and I'm happy with that there so next thing I'm going to do is select both the font or the text and my image as well, just by drawing a square around it. Clicking on the toolpath option here and selecting laser and just normal marking here. I'm gonna hit create toolpath. Now what that'll do is it'll give us an orange preview of the toolpath itself. If you zoom in there, you can see uh, the hatching there that's going to happen. That hatching is pretty tight, so uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not too concerned with how that looks. And then what we're going to do is if we're happy with that, click on Magic Laser. Here's where you would determine what kind of metal we're using here. So um, you can select any one of these and you can adjust all of the options as you need to. Uh, for this one here, being that it is a, a steel piece, I'm going to click on uh, steel, uh, marking this one here. And the frequency here is 37. That's set by the software. You can adjust that if you want to. You can just move that slider up and down or type a value in. Uh, same with your power here at 100%. Uh, it says it's going to do 30 counts of this, uh, which I don't really need. I'm only going to do uh, this as a sample. So I'm only going to do two counts. And the speed at 800 millimeters per second, which I'm pretty happy with. Now you've also got an option here to go deeper. If we click this on, then we can say we want a depth of whatever you want there, you can type that in, we'll use a slider. And how uh, how much movement the Z-axis or the laser head is going to have. So uh, every time it finishes whatever this count is here, then it will move down by this value here until it reaches this depth here. So uh, always bear that in mind. But um, yeah, 0.05 uh, Z-axis is, is pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't really worry about changing that too much. 
You'll also see we have a cleaner option here. Now what this does is after it's finished its main engraving, it'll go over it again with a cleaner, but at a much uh, or a, a highly reduced power setting here. Now you can adjust that. At the moment we've got 100% uh, there and a 10% cleaner. That basically is gonna go over it and remove any oxidization that happens to be within the, uh, the, the laser. Uh, engraving itself. Um, I normally bump this up to say about 25% and I usually only do one or maybe two uh, cleaning uh, passes with this. Usually one is, is sufficient. You'll notice the frequency here is 40 kilohertz which is a little bit higher than the, uh, the 37 that it's going to use to engrave. So I'm pretty happy with all of that there. Um, you'll see here that the laser focus is currently set to what we've uh, focused our laser at at 26.1 millimeters so I'm okay with where that sits and then what we can do is hit start engrave after that we get this message here once we hit the start button then the uh, door will go down the safety door will go down and the engraving will begin so if we're happy with all of that let's click on start and we'll do the engraving Okay, so what we can see here is the safety door has come down and the beginning of the engraving uh, cut has begun. It'll do two of these and then after this is finished, then it will go through its cleaning stage. And as I said before, that's just going to remove any of the oxidized area that has been engraved. And you can see there, it really cleans it up nicely. And that was at 25%, uh, whereas the engraving passes were both at 100% power. And here's the piece here taken out of the clamp. You can see here that uh, you know it's got some uh, good depth to it. It's certainly not going to rub off or anything like that. And so what we'll do after this is we'll give it a very quick polish just to get rid of some of that oxidization around the outside of the engraving. And then after polishing, we put it into the ultrasonic just to uh, get rid of any of the excess polish there. Depending on the engraving and the material, sometimes it's good to have a, uh, a small toothbrush just to get into those areas that uh, perhaps the sonic isn't getting into. And what you saw just there before was the before uh, polishing in sonic and now after polishing. Right, I hope that video has been helpful. Please feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.